welcome back to Googie's Kitchen and if you are new here then hello and welcome. My name's Alexis and I post two videos a week on a Tuesday and a Thursday at 7am. So if you love recipe videos like this one and you want to see more then please don't forget to hit that subscribe button and now I'm going to share with you how to make my delicious Herby salmon and tomato quinoa. As I just mentioned today, I want to share with you how to make my delicious herby salmon and tomato quinoa. Now this recipe is really easy to do and it makes a brilliant midweek meal and it makes an even better quick weekend meal as well. It will feed a whole family or it will feed a single person as well. It's tasty, delicious and really nutritious as well. Um, and I thought that I'd make it for dinner this evening and obviously while I was making it, I thought I'd share the recipe with you. So here is how to make my delicious herby salmon and tomato quinoa. The first thing I'm going to do is preheat my oven to 200 degrees. While my oven's preheating, I'm going to marinate my fish. So what I've got here is the juice of one whole lime and to that I'm going to add garlic. So in the original recipe, this serves four, but I'm serving this to two and a little one. But the little one probably won't want any of the marinade on his fish, so I'm just gonna do it for two pieces. So I've got one clove of garlic, but in the original recipe I said two, and also that's one juice, the juice of one whole lime as well. You can use lime or lemon, um, but I am still gonna use the juice of one whole lime because I love lime, so. I'm just going to add the garlic to the lime, to my little mixing bowl, and then I'm going to add two tablespoons of uh, olive oil. So as I said, I'm halving all the ingredients, so in the original recipe this would have been four, like so. And then I'm going to add two teaspoons of uh, dried mixed herbs as well. And again, in the original recipe, that would have been uh, four teaspoons. And I'm just gonna mix those together and I'm, grab, I'm gonna grab some salt as well. So I've got my salt and what I'm going to do is just add a pinch of salt to that as well, not too much. And then I'm going to move one piece away and move those two pieces closer together. So I've got two pieces of salmon that I'm just going to drizzle the marinade over um, and I'm just going to try and cover both pieces of fish with the marinade like so and try and spread it as evenly as I can across the top and then once I've done that I'm going to put the lid on this box and I'm going to put this in the fridge while I go and cook my quinoa now. Now I'm going to make the tomato quinoa. So I've put a large pan and I'm going to put that onto a high heat. I'm going to add a bit of oil to the base of the pan, like so. And I'm going to spread the oil around the base of the pan with a plastic brush. You don't have to do this, you could just let it spread itself naturally. I just like to spread it around. I feel like an artist doing this. Not a piss artist, I promise. Um, and then I'm going to leave this pan to heat up now. The pan is getting nice and hot now, so what I've done is I've got a bunch of spring onions that I have topped and tailed. So I've chopped the top and the bottom off and then I've just sliced it into sort of half centimetre pieces. And I'm going to put these into the base of the pan and I'm going to fry these now until they start to soften and become a sort of see-through clear texture as well. The spring onions have started to soften, but they are starting to burn a little bit on the bottom of the pan. So I've just added a bit of water there to stop them from sticking. And now what I'm going to do is I'm going to add in my red pepper. So I have peeled, oh no, sorry, I haven't peeled. I have sliced the top off a red pepper, then I remove the core and the stalk, and I just simply, simply sliced and diced the flesh. 
So I'm going to add this in and I'm going to fry the diced pepper until it starts to sort of soften. Pepper does take a long time to soften so if you get a bit impatient like me then don't worry too much. It will all soften eventually when you add in the some tea tomatoes and the stock or the water. So I'm just going to fry these now for a further few minutes. So the red pepper has started to soften slightly. It has taken a good few minutes for that to happen. But now what I'm going to do is I'm going to add in one courgette that I have um, peeled and then grated. You don't have to grate the courgette at all. You can, use, you can cut it up into chunky pieces if you like it chunky. We just prefer it like this in this house. Then nobody knows it's in there, you see. And uh, yeah, so I'm just going to continue to fry this until the courgette starts to soften now as well. Now I'm going to add my quinoa into this. And in here I have about 160 grams. In the original recipe, I think I said to use 300 grams. But obviously I'm serving this to two and a little one today. So um, I've only got about 100, I think 175 grams actually. Um, and I have washed this through twice over the sink. Um, and now I'm just gonna add this to the frying pan. And try to get it all out as well, like so. And I'm gonna fry this for a minute or so. So I like to fry it like you would risotto rice. So with risotto rice, you normally fry it until it goes see-through or clear. Um, obviously, quinoa doesn't really go see-through or clear, but I just like to fry it just to warm it up a little bit. And then once it's warm, I think that's enough now. Once it's warm, I'm going to add my tomato to this as well. So I've got one tin of tomatoes here that I'm going to add in, like so. And then I'm just gonna grab some water. In the original recipe, I think I said to use chicken stock. Unfortunately, I don't have any chicken stock on any bone broth at the moment. So I'm just gonna use about 200 mils of water and I'm just gonna add that to the stock and before I close the lid on that I'm going to add some tamari so I'm going to add a tablespoon of tamari to the quinoa and I'm also going to add a tablespoon of tomato puree as well and this is just to add a bit of flavour to the dish and I'm going to mix those in like so and then I'm going to go and grab my salt. So I've got my salt. I'm going to add a little pinch of salt to the dish as well. I'm going to grab my pepper and I'm going to add a little bit of pepper to the dish too. And then I'm going to just stir those in. And I'm going to bring this to the boil now. And then I'll turn it down and I'll leave it to simmer. And while this is cooking, I'm going to go and put my salmon in the oven. So as you can see here, the uh, quinoa has come to the boil. And what I'm going to do is I'm just going to turn the heat down to low. And I'm going to leave this to simmer now. So my fish has been marinating for about 20 minutes. And if you wanted to make this the night before, then you could. Um, and you could leave it in the fridge overnight. So all you have to do is put it in the oven the next day. So now all I'm gonna do is simply put this into my baking tray, which has been in the oven. You don't need to do that if you don't want to. Um, and I'm just gonna put this into the oven for 15 to 20 minutes now. So my quinoa is cooked. And the last thing I'm going to do is I'm just gonna add a little bit of spinach to the quinoa rice just going to mix that in and let it wilt down and that is the quinoa cooked and my fish is also cooked so i'm going to serve up now that's 
how you make my delicious herby salmon and tomato quinoa and that recipe I will link in the description box below for you. I'm off to enjoy this for my dinner now so that's it from me. Thank you so much for watching. Please feel free to give me a big thumbs up if you enjoyed this video and please feel free to leave any comments below and please don't forget to hit that subscribe button. See you all soon. Bye.